In this presentation, I will examine the ways in which various concepts derived from dataclism by Christian Rudder are incorporated into some of the games we play. In Dataclism, Christian Rudder describes how in today's society we turn to data for the genuine history of modern day communication. Now referring to data does not mean what's written by historians or what's told in documentaries about the past. Rather, in Dataclism, the data observed is data stored through activities we do online. This data is more genuine because we have no control over how it's portrayed. Basically, what you see is what you get. According to Rudder, about 87% of the United States is online, which means at this point in time, the activities of the majority of people residing in the U.S. can be tracked online. Why is this important? Well, instead of relying on historians to accurately record our history, it is done as soon as we get to the Internet. History aside, raw data portrays our feelings, attitudes, and desires for what they really are, not what we'd like them to be. So how does this tie into general game design? Firstly, as we play games either online or locally, data is being stored and tracked throughout the game. This data is used for reporting, customization, forecasts, and much more. When designing a game, an essential aspect of the process is defining or targeting an audience for which the game is intended. There are many ways of doing this. One way is to listen to the feedback gathered during playtesting or surveying existing fans to understand what they're looking for in a game. But what happens when a game is designed incorporating all the aspects asked for, yet it still performs poorly? Well, Dataclism explains this phenomenon as social desirability bias. This type of bias arises when respondents, like playtesters, provide feedback based on how they want to be portrayed. For example, let's say you ask a general audience which of the following games they find more attractive. War games, love games, educational, or religious games. Depending on whichever cultural norm the individual is used to, they may feel obligated to reply in a certain manner. This depends on who is asking the question, what other people are around, or the setting the question is being asked in. All of these external factors taken into account may lead the respondent to choosing an option they don't actually like best, but feel better selecting. However, if researchers examine respondents' behavior online, their Google searches, other games they've played, websites they visit, they may be able to zone in on what the user is actually looking for in a game. The user themselves may not even know, but after playing, they may find that the game is more enjoyable. One of the most essential aspects involved in the world of games is communication. Bringing people together is a huge selling point for games of all types. For example, virtual games using data to match opponents at skill level. Now, according to the foundations of game design, when creating a game, an important factor in the structure of the game is challenge. Think of a game like League or Dota. Both are multiplayer games where if your teammates or opponents are on a similar skill level, the game is highly competitive and a lot of fun. But if you unknowingly decide to play against someone who is not as experienced as you, or you decide to team up with someone who doesn't have as much experience, you can, be, you can become either frustrated or the game is just boring. So using data collected, you can determine whether or not you want to play against someone or with someone by reviewing their stats beforehand. Some players in the online community rely heavily on this data to make decisions. Therefore, data collected over the internet is embedded in the overall gamer experience. Another interesting fact about data in relation to games is looking back historically, data provides the truth about which games were popular in a specific time period and which weren't. Prior to the introduction of the internet, these sort of records were from one person's point of view. This wasn't always accurate and did possess some bias. The cool thing about data is it can show us exactly what worked and what didn't, so we don't repeat the same mistakes and we can continue to develop our games to suit the audience best. 